Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kitbatch.com, out here with my competition loadout from the 2024 Moons Out, Goons Out. If you're unfamiliar with Moons Out, Goons Out, really fun night vision competition put on by Ian over at Forgotten Weapons with the help of One Shepherd as well as a bunch of sponsors. And it being a night vision competition, gear intensive kind of on the one hand, in addition to that, it was at Echo Valley Training Center over in West Virginia, where I decided to camp. So that comes with its own logistics. And on top of that, I was shooting the staff match as well as the main match. So two different divisions, double the guns, all that stuff too. Consequently, there was a lot of things involved. Fortunately, a lot of it kind of overlapped as far as gear wise, but yeah. I will give you a breakdown of what I used and basically how it did for me. Starting, I guess, fundamentally just the basics as far as what I was wearing, layers, stuff like that. This match, honestly, any match, it's really important, especially matches that are at night, probably cold, especially depending on time of year. And if you are not, if you're not prepared for it, it just makes things miserable whether it's a competition or a course again if it's raining whatever's happening and you're more focused on being cold or wet miserable any of those things then you can't actually apply yourself to learning through a course or the competition itself so clothing is definitely important ground up i guess i brought these weird still some mud on them these are my limbs these are the um of course i'm gonna blank on them now do they have a name in them they do outlander totally spaced they're actually waterproof i really like them they're a zero drop shoe i'm pretty sure i reviewed them in the past and these are waterproof so they are not super breathable not somewhere you want to really or, or not something you want to wear when it's warm, but when it's cool and wet, they do great. So these actually did a really good job there. As far as socks, have these by 0.6. They're basically like knee high and merino wool did amazing. I wore either these or I actually changed my socks daily, but basically some sort of largely knee high wool socks help keep me warm. Pretty much the entire time I wore this right here, which is by, I'm pretty sure it's by Sitka. It's their, yeah, it's one of their merino layers. It's like quarter, half zip, whatnot, long sleeve shirt. Basically wore that again all of the days. And then same with this right here. These are by Beyond. These are the Testa soft shell pants. Again, wore them every single day they're actually really nice they're my favorite kind of cold weather outdoor backcountry pant they actually did good there but they actually have a really nice brushed soft inside so they are comfortable they're also warm and then man mvp this guy right here i actually really like this this is new from beyond it is an amazing layer really breathable also really warm and while this generally kept me pretty good again <laughs> wore it every single day with this prometheus design works or ag watch cap this did a good job just kind of during the day but then at night during the match it got cold like you're shooting all through the night and so to stay warm i brought this right here which this is the cetra i believe it is also by Beyond. These are their, or yeah, their jacket. And right here, their pants. Weird, dirty. But ended up taking these and they pretty much saved me. Being able to just not freeze is super important. These are basically their level seven, like high loft. And one, they could compress down for traveling. And they also just kept me warm. So, through the competition, you're basically waiting your turn, rotating through, moving to the next stage, and there's a lot of downtime. And if you're not moving and active, 
end up getting pretty cold. So while I wasn't very active, this allowed me to still stay warm and yeah, just not freeze. Also something worth mentioning, I was camping out there. One, I think it's cool that at Echo Valley Training Center you can camp because yeah, opportunity to hang out with buddies. One of my friends was camping, so I'm like, yeah, like let's do it. But that also meant I had to carry all my camping stuff too. So as you can imagine, my gun case, which I'll get to is like, I don't know, 47 pounds. And then my checked bag with all my camping gear as well as other stuff was like right at 50 pounds. So I ended up bringing a tent that I've had probably for like 30 years, old mountain hardware tent, never treated the rain fly, got it when I was in high school. Spoiler, it ended up raining one of the days. So I get finished shooting at like three in the morning, unzip the tent, look in, and there's like water dripping onto my sleeping bag. This guy right here by Big Agnes, it is their Spike Lake bag. And I'm like, ah, oh, awesome. I was so tired, I didn't care. So I pretty much just left my clothes on, took my shoes off, and climbed straight in this bag and went to sleep, even though this was already kind of wet. Ivan, why would you do that? One, did I mention I was really tired at like three in the morning? The other part is, as much as it's not fun sometimes, literally in the business of reviewing stuff, and while I have actually reviewed this before and I've spoken to it, I never actually celebrated it and went out of my way to go spend like an entire night with it, and I did. So this is actually treated with down tech and hydroscopic, I think that's the right term. Basically the down feathers inside this are treated so that they don't traditionally, if this is a down bag and you get it wet, it just turns into like a giant softball size ball of down feathers really compact and nothing else just a huge empty sack this does not do that even though it was wet allowed me to basically sleep through the night not the best night's sleep but i also wasn't i wasn't freezing or anything like that and yeah it was not the best night's sleep though i would like that to be noted another clutch piece of gear these right here these are the guide light gloves by beyond and they're basically a light version of their guide glove. And are they a shooting glove? No, they're not. Did I shoot with them? Absolutely did. Can you shoot pistol with them? You can, not my favorite. Was there any detriment shooting rifle? No, and they're awesome. Like, again, not made for it, but they did a great job, touch capacitive. And most importantly, they're actually insulated. So a lot of your shooting gloves, whatever, mechanics, this and that, not insulated. These, again, made for out in the back country, things like that. But being insulated and still having that dexterity for shooting, yeah, really stoked on these. Of course, also inside my check bag, I actually had my camera in its Pelican case, more weight. Oh, which also <laughs> reminds me, driving to the airport to fly out at like 2.30 in the morning to go make my flight. And I realized in the back seat is my tripod. Not in my check bag, but just in the back seat. At that point, my check, one, there was no room for it. Two, there's no like weight allowance for it. I was already at 50 pounds. So I was like, oh well. And I ended up actually stopping at Walmart, eventually got a $15 little plastic tripod. It worked for what I needed, really just somewhere to put my camera when I wasn't holding it and set it up for a couple shots. But hold on. For my carry-on, I actually had this by Audi, Ate, Ot Gear, whatever it is. It's basically their helmet bag. And so for the competition, I shot, again, two different divisions. Hey, come here, out of the way. Two divisions, one of them being passive, the other one being active. Passive meaning just that, you're shooting passively through your optic, you cannot emit any energy. 
And then active, you can use IR illumination, IR lasers, whatever you want. So for both of them, see if this will not fall. I ended up using this setup right here. This is my ops core. This is their, I want to say Sentry XP helmet. Could be totally wrong. And it's great. It is a ballistic helmet, so it is not as light as a bump helmet, but the way it's actually cut, it comes down because if you want a ballistic helmet, you probably are looking for ballistic protection to include in the side of your head. And yeah, not as light as a bump helmet, but did good, pretty comfortable. Had the amps on there. They did a good job for me, just allowing me to hear range commands, anything like that. And then I also have the in-ear ear pro, which goes with this NFIM, near field magnetic induction, I think it is. Used them a couple times really just because I needed ear pro in, so, because I think some people weren't shooting suppressed savages and I didn't want to have my helmet on at the time. So I'd throw those in. Usually I wasn't wearing them in conjunction with this, even though it's made for it, just didn't. And then right here, the Streamlight, I think it's their Sidewinder. Yeah, Sidewinder stock. Used it, mainly set on the red setting. There was a 60 second penalty if you white light it to include off the firing line, like jamming mags or whatever. So I just had this thing set up with the red light used it to jam mags, everything like that. And then this right here by Lacentia Arms. This is a little battery pack holder, goes back there. I don't have it in here right now. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of counterweights because weight on your head is just weight on your head. But if you are gonna do that, actually make it meaningful. So inside here, I actually have a 10 round PMAG, jammed with 5.56. I got pretty light towards the end of, yeah, towards the end of the competition, got light on ammo. I was like, man, am I gonna have to pull this thing out? Would have been pretty amazing, do that on the clock. I did not though, fortunately. Also built into this, these elastic loops for vertically or horizontally, basically running chem lights, which we ended up doing, that was pretty handy. And then, Wilcox G24 mount, clip that guy on there. And then for my night vision, I was using this right here. These are my DTNVSs from Lacentia Arms. Awesome guys over there. Amazing tubes, filmless, white foss, L3. And I will say really paid dividends, especially shooting in the passive division shooting active kind of like okay you can you can overpower obstacles i.e illuminated enough to where mediocre tubes you can still see what's going on and stuff shooting passive not as much so definitely really helped out there and then on here these focus research caps used them a little bit and when i did use them they were actually really handy to shorten or I guess expand the focal plane so that more things were in focus rather than that really narrow uh, band of focus. So those definitely came in handy. And then right here is the Grec X. It is a mission recorder and it allowed me to get footage of what my dominant right eye was seeing and yeah, got some pretty cool footage through it. These cases are awesome. I've actually reviewed these before. They're by Impact Casing Container. I really like a number of things about them. One, there's wheels on here. There's a handle to drag it, even though I'd rather have the handle on the other side. So it's a longer handle, that's what it is. Um, giant hinge along here, so it always actually closes correctly. And there's a locking bar. So you only need one lock, which is really nice. And then, Arguably, probably my favorite thing about these cases is the foam they use inside them is, it's almost like a memory foam. So you can put a ton of things in here and then just smash it all down. Nothing moves, everything stays put, which is really cool. Um, before I dive into that stuff in there real quick, I will say 
I, through one of the local gun stores there, you could basically buy ammo for the match. So I did that for 556 five, because they did offer it and they were offering, yeah, this X-Tac 55 grain. So I got that, that was cool. Took care of some logistics, but what I also had and didn't want to have to repurchase in part because it's expensive, especially now, is 762 by 39 for one of my guns. So I actually had this, I think I brought 300 rounds, I want to say, of 762 by 39 soft point Bernal. And inside this bag, rather. And then I guess mainly I just have my 556 mags in here. Also, one of the stages, you got. A pretty sweet P mag, laser engraved with the moons out, goons out. Uh, the stage actually had a stage gun where you're shooting frangible, so you had a mag with 28 rounds, and then whatever you had left over, just get rid of those rounds, and you get to keep the P mag, which is cool. And then I have, yeah, mainly just kind of my other P mags for shooting my gun that was taking AR mags or traditional mags. Oh, and I also have this mag, which malfunctioned on me awesome but more on that in a little bit uh this bag i want to say now i'm the space on who makes it i actually use them there we go mdom usa really handy basically range bags for ammo you can put stuff in there i think i reviewed this like years ago but i brought about 11 pounds of 762 by 39 all together, like I said, about 300 rounds. I think when it finished, I had like 17 rounds left. So, whew, got a little light. Fortunately, even though I was shooting two guns, two different divisions, I there was overlap, obviously. Helmet, nods, everything like that. Same with basically carrying ammo. So I had that level seven from beyond, kept me nice and warm. And this was something that I could just easily put on over it. This is, I want to say the old Mark II Spiritus system with the three or room four, three mags back there. And it did a good job. One thing with the competition is you had to actually maintain, yeah, you had to maintain all your gear. If you dropped a magazine and left it, 60 second penalty pretty steep. So I didn't have a dump pouch. Uh, I actually just used one of the hand pockets on that beyond that setter jacket. Worked fine. Honestly worked better with the 762 by 39 mags just in part because they were metal and curvature or whatever. I don't know. It seemed to stay in there really well versus just the AR mags. But yeah, this worked really well. Uh, other things that got brought and used right here is my pretty much bring it everywhere because always ends up being useful fix it sticks a bunch of them a little fallen out should probably put those back but ended up using that in part one of the guns i had set up where this was on there this is actually a pretty neat little design it's something from bobro where this mount am i doing it the right way Maybe not, I don't know. Hmm, it's just wedged on there. Hard to get leverage on there. Basically this piece though, will mount onto a gun, pick rail, and then this piece can slide on and off. And so this being a Kiji. I had a gun set up to where if one went down, I could basically shoot it active without having to move and re-zero laser. I would just use this Kiji, being able to shoot active with that. Didn't end up needing it. A guy who was in my squad, his laser did die. So he actually borrowed this, helped him shoot out at distance that he otherwise wouldn't have able to do just because illumination. So while I didn't use it, someone else did. Pretty cool. Uh, here's that 10 round PMAG, which was basically a match saver sitting in the back of my helmet. And then, because why not try something? First time ever at a competition. Bexer Arms, just kidding, it's pronounced Bear Arms, B-E-X-A-R. Uh, buddy basically making some loop. 
and lubed the guns with it. Did great to include even when they got all wet, still lubed. I will say staff match. Some people, some people's guns got crushed, especially the thing is a lot of people don't shoot their gun. A lot of people shoot, not everyone shoots throughout the course of hours, a lot of rounds. And when you do that, you start to see where like the wheels fall off. Things get dirty, things start to choke, things like that. And so these guns uh, did run into some issues, more on those in a minute. None of them were lubricated related issues, I guess we'll say. So that worked as well. But uh, yeah, I will show you the guns I shot now. I ended up shooting the first night in the staff match, shooting passive. I shot this gun right here, which is by Griffin Armament. It's their Mark II, I want to say 11.5 with their Recce 5K can. Scalarworks Kick 01 Riser, EOTech EXPS3 something. I don't remember. It's one that actually has night vision or night vision setting. And then also on here, one of the early Stoner Rifle Grips. Little custom job on there and this right here which is the sierra attack padded sling so i ended up shooting this a couple things that this did a really good job with one utex are my favorite for shooting night vision passive nice big window the holographic sight incredibly clean reticle and with this riser made it to where yeah, easy to get behind it with night vision on you'll notice the sling is not attached. So while this gun comes with kind of like a vanilla USGI trigger, I ended up getting a couple triggers from a company who I can't remember at this minute and they're cassette triggers. They're actually really nice triggers. This one right here is a single stage, which I actually like because as much as ideally see a target you're like cool touch the trigger get rid of any slack let it break lots of times i'm like all right sights are on go now and then honestly not the best but a single stage is actually more conducive to that style of shooting than the two stage so actually really like it but i think four yeah about four stages in out of the eight i finished shooting that stage and when you're done they're like cool chambers clear send the bolt forward hammer down i do that then force a habit went to go put this thing back on safe and it actually went back on safe i was like huh i wonder if that's a feature of this trigger some triggers you can actually put on safe even when the hammer is down so we get to the next stage and get to the shooting portion and I'm like, oh, I need to shoot that once. Okay, ba-bam! Like, two hits on steel. Oh, this next target, ba-bam! Every time I press the trigger, it was basically two round burst. And there I was with two round burst. And honestly, I wasn't, I wasn't so much of the mind of, hey, I don't like having two round burst. It's kind of fun. I was more of the mind of, hey, if this discharges when I don't want it to discharge, i.e. when the gun's on safe, then I immediately get DQ'd. Best scenario. Worst scenario, someone dies because gun goes off when it shouldn't. So how do I proceed? Well, I basically just swapped lowers with someone. So took the sling off of the upper, pulled the pins in between stages. One of the guys, buddy, Hop, if you're aware of him, he has his own channel, does some stuff for TFB TV as well. And yeah, basically back and forth for the next, I think three stages, we just swap lowers and shot through the rest of the match. Again, no issue of the gun, really comes down to this trigger. And while there are basically set screws that drive it in and create tension, ideally upwards against the trigger pin and the hammer pin, 
not enough, I guess. Or, I don't know, maybe through all the firing, kind of loosen the tension. I don't know, but that happened. And the way cassette triggers are also, usually on a trigger pin, if you're unfamiliar, there's little notches. And so the springs from your hammer will come down and lay and catch one of those notches. So basically it keeps it from walking out. This being a cassette did not have that and it walked out, but yeah, persevered and made it work. Then in the active division, I shot this little guy. This is my Rattler LT by SIG with their, I want to say SLX, is that right? SLX C 762 can. Basically their short flow, sh uh, flow through can. Also on here, the BE Myers Mall C1 Plus. This, I think it's still a prototype, don't think it's for sale yet, by Die Free Company. Little hand stop. Coming back here, this is the Scalarworks Leap, or Leap Mount rather, for Aimpoint Micro T2. And then the Kung Fu Grip by Die Free Company. And then what I don't have on here, I don't think I brought it out here, had a single point sling get you killed in the streets. Single point sling by Lunar Concepts. And one, like there's only so much real estate to actually mount a sling on this. And so for places where I needed a sling, it did just that, like held the gun securely. QD socket, just put it back here. But yeah, I ended up shooting this thing. I will say, man, this thing breathes fire. Keep in mind, 7.4 inch barrel, 7.62 by 39, shooting steel case Russian ammo, and then a flow through cam. I honestly had a ton of fun shooting this gun though. The Maul did amazing. It is, and still in my experience, pretty much the best laser device out there. I don't have experience with every single one, but also the way I've explained it to people too though is with this mall and like the switching back and forth between these settings. Even if this worked as good as like one of the crappy D balls, which is way better. Even if this worked like one of those D balls, I would still take this for no other reason than the switching. People often overlook like how important switching is and being able to move back and forth between your different positions with this, really important. There were definitely some where I kept it on low and like shoot house, for example, going through there shooting. And then some of the other stages, moved this thing up to medium, shot worked well. And then there were some stages, especially on the trench, ended up putting this thing up to high just because with any flood, you're shooting through these ports. And so with any flood, you end up with so much illumination just coming back in your night vision. If you have basically this broad flood, that having that pushing a beam out of illumination made it way easier. But this gun was a ton of fun to shoot. Oh, also, because why not? One of the stages, I think it was the Humvee stage. I'm like, yeah, like, let's see how amazing this thing is with uh, this little three prong flash hider. And so I actually took the can off for one stage and it is so obnoxious. Just this massive fireball, huge fireball. And not to mention just concussive, but again, just a lot of fun. And yeah, I had a ton of fun shooting this gun. I will say I was off to a rough start because went to go shoot this the very first yeah first stage of shooting active on that first night basically after the staff match within 10 feet i had three malfunctions cleared them out on the clock shot through it yeah it happened and so part of it was honestly just a known issue bad on me but i'm also kind of cheap so a bunch of the ammo I had was 762 by 39 soft point Bernal. I love soft point because it kills things, which is great if you're using ammo to kill things. But the way the magazines feed or magazines for this 
It's basically a metal like USGI mag and you have kind of messed up geometry because of 762 by 39. So if it doesn't stack perfectly, the round points down a little bit when it gets up to the top. If that happens with soft point, you do not have this rounded pointed nose to skip up and that soft point can and did basically smash in there and just stop like wholesale stop so you got to clear that thing out one of the mags i've definitely just had issues with i should probably get rid of it the actual like factory dura mag that was made specifically for sig worked flawlessly go figure of course i only had one of those and i ended up running into that i think a couple times throughout the match again just kind of a known thing now known with the ammo but it was also the ammo i had and i didn't really want to come out of pocket to buy another 300 rounds especially now that that ammo is like 50 cents a round or something ridiculous now thanks russia but yeah ended up shooting this and had a ton of fun shooting this gun thoughts overall things i would do different given respective equipment things like that no i would probably do it all the same and also worth mentioning real quick it didn't end up raining on i guess the first night of the main match so my second night of shooting which that was cool yeah got wet i will say that level seven that cetera still stayed warm which is important but back to issues i had and things i would not change really what it comes down to is why am i doing what i'm doing and part of that is well mainly all of it is just the experience of doing it i'm not going out to compete because hey i want to go win this thing like no like that'd be fun but whatever and i forget exactly where i ranked in the different divisions and stuff like that not at the bottom like made made the stuff work for sure and even though i ran into issues whether it's clearing out malfunctions with this or like trigger pin walking things like that and i think maybe a malfunction with that somewhere in there here's the thing what is more valuable for me as a shooter like having a completely checked out gun totally vetted that just runs perfectly so I can go shoot the competition or having to basically figure out diagnose problems and clear malfunctions under knots. That's probably more valuable for me, honestly. And yeah, it's a backdrop for ultimately creating reviews on different stuff anyway. Something I should mention, I just remembered, totally self-induced malfunction. I actually had this gun and I was trying to get stable. It was shooting leaning up against a post i think it was on the it was on the o-core stage which i had actually done with this gun but as you can tell a little bit of a disparity in handguards there so while i was able to do it with this was not able to do it with this and basically up against a post firing and inducing a malfunction it was basically getting brass coming straight or I couldn't tell if it was because again night vision under nods set to infinity my focus i don't know if the brass was not getting out of the ejection port or it was kidding out and then getting thrown back in but basically inducing a malfunction in the same situation which was hugely beneficial here as far as creating stability because of the shorter length or shorter handguard put my ejection port right in front of this beam Created malfunctions again opportunities for learning so yeah even though I ran into the stuff I ran into that unto itself like I said more valuable than these guns just running perfectly and me yeah, running a perfect match so yeah wouldn't change any of it overall great time out there there'll be links down below if you want to check out any of the stuff I mentioned and yeah as always Thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.